Good day friends. I'm glad you came to my channel. The earth is undoubtedly flat. I recently watched the riveting popular science film and now firmly believe that. I think you've already realized that I'm not crazy. I was just temporarily under the influence of old hot outage. But why is there such a desperate debate about the shape of the earth all over the world lately? Maybe it is really flat? As with any theory, the proponents of flat earth or flat earth have their own postulates that underlie this theory. You probably have already heard about them, just watch this movie, but I repeat for those who are just interested in the name. Imagine a disc with the North Pole at its center, a disc a little over 40,000 kilometers in diameter, that's our planet. The Earth is covered with a transparent dome over which the Sun and the Moon rotate like spotlights, this ensures the change of day and night, gravity, in its usual representation, does not exist. Antarctica is not, and instead of the south pole edge of the Earth, it surrounds the entire circumference of the ice wall. All photos from space, this, processed in Photoshop or other programs, forgery, Spaceships and other devices are made of cardboard and plywood, all travel into space filmed on fictional scenarios on Earth. The dominant view of the spherical Earth is a conspiracy sponsored by Masons to hide the truth from the entire population of the planet. Everyone who knows the truth, scientists, NASA employees, astronauts are funded by Masons and are also members of the conspiracy. Some at this point will turn off the video. So delusional seem these postulates, I wanted to understand where the legs grow. The fact that it is very similar to what we were taught in school as a representation of the ancient people of the world I will not repeat, it's all so clear, but how do such ideas in our time? Deal with history. At school we were taught that only ancient people believed in such fairy tales. Remember where you can find references to flat earth? In Sumerian, Scandinavian, Cosmogonic mythology, the ancient inhabitants of Egypt, Babylon, Greece, biblical tales, Hinduism and Buddhism. It was all in ancient times, in the Middle Ages, too, there were followers of this theory. In our time, it is generally accepted that the earth has the shape of a ball, or rather, the shape of a geoid, and all the ancient ideas are swept aside and recognized by modern science is completely untenable. However, this does not mean that all safely abandoned the ancient treatises, forgot about the ideas of ancestors and believed school textbooks. There is a so-called Flat Earth Society. It originated in England in the 19th century with the light hand of the English inventor Samuel Robotham. He conducted various experiments and experiments, during which he saw what he wanted to see, the Earth is flat. Under the pseudonym Parallax, he wrote a small book called Zetetic Astronomy where he described in detail the results of some of his experiments and evidence that the Earth does not have the shape of a ball, and the surface of the world ocean, a flat plane. For several years, the book was reprinted, each time the number of pages in it increased, as well as the number of followers of the theory of Herbitham. The Parallax conducted paid lectures, conducted himself at times aggressive, and were even able to attack those who dared to disagree with his point of view. Followers appeared in America and Europe, movement spread in consequence of around the world. Hitler, by the way, was also an adept of this theory. The most interesting thing is that the supporters of this idea is becoming more and more, society has broken up into several different currents and organizations. And it does not matter that many scientists have empirically proved the correctness of the statement that the Earth is spherical. The adherents of the flat theory do not pay attention to this and give their unwavering arguments. Just type the appropriate query in the search engine and voila! A whole heap of videos, facts, evidence, arguments, denials, forums, discussions on this topic. Now I will give only some arguments which as the proof of the theory are given by supporters of the flat earth, and you, listening to them, try to define for yourself on whose party you are. That is, in your opinion what is truth and what is a contrived invention and manipulation of facts. Knowing the length of the diameter of the earth and the fact that our planet makes a complete revolution around its axis for a day, that is, 24 hours, it is easy to calculate the speed of its rotation, it is more than 400 meters per second. 
you can imagine our Earth spinning at a speed of almost half a kilometer per second. What happens? How can planes land on the runway if the Earth is round and constantly spinning around its axis? By the time the landing strip would have gone far from the place intended for a landing, because it is shifted to the side with a very high speed according to the theory of spherical Earth. If the core shoots out of the gun from west to east, it should fly twice less than it can, as the planet moves with great speed with it. And, if you shoot from east to west, it is logical that the core will fly twice the distance, because the Earth is moving towards him. But for some reason this does not happen. This undermines the knowledge of the sphericity and rotation of the Earth. And if you shoot a gun into the sky, the flight of the projectile up and then down will be a few seconds, and in theory, during this time the place where the gun is, should shift relative to the core for several kilometers, and therefore the core will land much further, but this also does not happen. The adherents of the Flat Earth Society happily applaud. I will not bore you with various physical proofs and complex formulas that refute all this nonsense. Just imagine the Earth as the interior of a huge railway car that moves at high speed in some, it does not matter in what direction. So, this car will be a kind of model, where the fly, sitting on a piece of half-eaten chicken on the table in your compartment deeply do not care at what speed and where this car goes. Instead of a fly, you can imagine a mix with a slingshot, instead of a gun in the field. Well, with these arguments it is clear, we go further. Curvature of the horizon. These experiments began to carry out more robotham, in our time they became more, and they varied. If the Earth is a sphere, then there is a curvature, and nothing should be visible beyond the horizon line. But in practice, such high objects as lighthouses, mountains, statues are visible from such distances from which they should be well below the horizon and therefore should not be visible if the Earth is spherical. For example, the Needles Lighthouse, located near Hampshire in the UK, whose height is 54 meters, is visible at a distance of 60 kilometers, and the curvature of the Earth at this distance is 282 meters. It turns out that the point where the lighthouse is located should be below the horizon line by 282 meters, if the Earth is spherical. But this does not happen. The lighthouse is visible from this distance. The same situation is with ships that are in the open sea, and we look at them from the shore. It creates the illusion that moving away from the shore, the ship is hidden behind the horizon, which seems to confirm that the spherical Earth has a bend. However, if we take good equipment and adjust the magnifying zoom, the ship, disappeared over the horizon will reappear in our field of vision. That is. Our vision is limited to the point of dispersion of the perspective, not the horizon line. If you arm the eye, then no horizon line, limiting visibility due to the curvature of the Earth, will not. Here's another such argument brought by the supporters of a flat Earth. Now, about the lighthouse. Was taken from Black Samurai the height of the lighthouse of 54 meters, while its height is now 31 meters, of course. As always people don't quite have the information. In the same article that I read specifically to understand this question, so in this article, where the height of the tower of the lighthouse it is said that the height of the light propagation is equal to 24 meters, and the beam from the lighthouse, depending on the color, visible at a distance of 14 and 17 nautical miles. In the same article, by the way, it is said that from some sources it follows that earlier there was a too high lighthouse maybe just 54 meters, the light of which periodically disappeared in a thick, low fog, as the lights were above the fog layer. But the modern version of the Needle Lighthouse is quite clearly visible to ships that have to overcome the Strait of Solent, following to Portsmouth and Southampton. Having carried out simple calculations, we arrive at the following results, given that one nautical mile is 1,852 meters. 14 nautical miles equals a distance of 25,928 meters, that is 1 nautical mile. Almost 26 kilometers, and 17 miles minus 31,480 meters, that is 31, 5 kilometers, taking into account the known radius of the Earth 6371000 meter, we get that the swimmer, located at the level of the water surface, will see this beacon from a distance of 17.5 kilometers, 
but the beacons are not installed for swimmers, and for ships where the observation point is much higher, namely on the main deck, plus the growth of the observer, which is for a small vessel is not less than 8 meters, so we get that the specified characteristics of the visibility of the lighthouse corresponds to the declared, that is 14.89 nautical miles. If to take into account the height of the waves of the sea, to prevent the great height of the observation point, in such a special case as the Fata Morgana effect, we can safely say that even a lighthouse with a height distribution of the beam at 24 meters under certain favorable conditions, it is possible to see from a distance of 30 kilometers and even more than that. That okay go further. Proponents of the theory of flat earth argue that Americans have never been on the moon. Here is literally an excerpt from one source, for example, you can consider Apollo 11, where the inhabitants of the earth, allegedly made the first trip to the moon. If you enlarge the photo, you can see what is made of lunacod, oil cloth, cardboard, foil, plastic and other things, not intended to overcome atmospheric pressure, and even more so travel into space, material. It's just a mock-up, photographs against the background of astronauts, who are all masons without exception. In some photos, you can even see that on the fingers of the astronauts or on their wrists there are rings or watches with conventional Masonic symbols, a compass and a square, inside which is the letter G. The picture will be incomplete without understanding what is actually, or not really, but according to the adepts of the theory of flat Earth, the moon, the sun and the stars. Here again we see the statement that all photos on the moon are taken on the Earth. The Flat Earth Society even conducts special expeditions, the purpose of which is to search for places on our planet where allegedly space photos are taken. During such an expedition to Iceland in August 2015, they filmed landscapes, exactly, repeating those pictures and videos, which we are told that they were made on the moon. The astronauts participating in the Apollo program, recall that this was the first man landing on the moon which ended in 1975, all to one refused to swear on the Bible that they really were on the moon. Fragments of this video are easy to find on the internet. One of the astronauts swears, someone goes away from the answer, someone rudely sends a journalist who asks to swear on the Bible about the reality of walking on the lunar surface. I do not understand how the fact whether the flight to the moon was made by American astronauts or not can affect the shape of the Earth. The fact of stay on the moon of Americans causes various disputes and doubts long ago, but only adherents of the flat earth it was far-fetched as the proof of the theory. Even if we assume that it was a staged performance to exaggerate the achievements of the United States in the field of astronautics, the earth will not be flat. Another so-called proof of the flat shape of the earth is the thermos effect. That is, the fact that the vacuum is a very good heat insulator and on earth. At such a distance from the sun, taking into account the cosmic cold all would have to freeze. What to say? Utter nonsense. It is said people that even the device of the thermos don't know, and you climb into higher matter. I briefly just for them, not for you, dear visitor of my channel. Tell how does a thermos, or rather its more complex and technologically sophisticated sibling, doer. In 1879, the physicist Professor A. Winold proposed to use a double-walled glass vessel with vacuum between the walls to preserve liquid gases, but this was not enough for long-term storage of liquefied gases. In 1890, the English chemist Professor James Dewar perfected the bottle of Weinhold, silvering the walls, which weakened the leakage of heat through the walls. In 1904, the Berlin glass blower Arberger added a protective shell to the Dewar vessel and began to sell it as a thermos for hot coffee or broth. It was the improvement of James Dewar, who used a mirror surface, that allowed to neutralize the effects of radiation, that is the transfer of energy, and hence the change in temperature by means of radiation. Our sun, which is a huge thermonuclear reactor, just the lion's share of the released energy is transmitted by radiation in various spectra including infrared, transmitting thermal energy, but the mirrors around the Earth I did not notice. More than that, at least, I did not have the patience to analyze all the utopian concepts of flat Earth supporters. But I want some more to leave the stones in their direction, but short. First, in order to prove a particular theory, 
it is necessary to have a detailed and reasoned, consistent with any criticism, logically impeccable teaching. In order to show the inconsistency of the same theory, it is enough to present at least one, but 100% refutation. If you believe the map of flat earth, the coast of Antarctica will have the greatest length. The circle, the boundary of the earth's disk, which is declared adepts of the flat earth of Antarctica is declared in 40,000 kilometers. Very well, that is, any circle in sign will be less than the circle of the earth's disk, I do not confuse anything? Well, it is enough to measure in any way the length of one of the parallels in the high latitudes of the southern hemisphere and compare with the length of the equator, I think with the modern level of technology is not difficult. And you do not need to send a special spacecraft to near earth space, as some advise. If the equator, for some miraculous reason, is shorter than the parallel, I will be the first to apologize to the offended Blas Kozmeltsi. Convinced, gentlemen? You can also measure the length of the parallels of the northern and southern hemispheres length of one degree, if they are the same, the earth is round, convinced? Not yet? Where according to your theory, the moon walk with the sun, providing different duration of the light day. Apparently at some height above the equatorial circle? The earth from this circle to the center of the disk is like the northern hemisphere, and the earth from the trajectory of the sun and the moon to the outer edge of the disk, Antarctica is like the southern hemisphere. Good. Then if you look at the passing moon from the northern hemisphere we will always see one side of the moon, and at the same time people in the southern hemisphere will see the other side of the moon. What will people see at the equator? That is, on the trajectory of the moon? Obviously, part of the north side and part of the south side of the moon itself. All this is contrary to reality. Well, it seems to be to convince everyone. But how to explain the phenomenon of such a passionate discussion of the topic of flat earth on the internet? Am I so smart and the others not so smart? Personally, I don't think I'm smart. So what's the reason? Yes, as always very simple. Publish an article on the net with a screaming title and trample views. No space. All astronauts are in collusion and are masons. There are no satellites or spacecraft in orbit. Pilots deceive everyone about the flight routes because they are also in collusion or under the threat of deprivation of life. Here is such a libutin can often be found on the vast expanses of the internet, and most importantly with impunity for publishing. Summing up, it should be noted that most of the supporters of this theory are ardent adherents of certain religious movements. The general level of degradation of education and the exact sciences affects the growing public supporters of this theory. All the so-called facts are nothing but misinterpretation of the phenomena of nature in favor of a particular theory or the most real falsification of these facts. In one case, that would cut money from views, on the other hand to mislead ordinary people. In any case, believe it or not in a flat earth should decide everyone for himself. Tomorrow perhaps we will tell that the earth is shaped like a suitcase for easy transport of live material representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations. And that is the topic. Cling to it, fans of cheap sensations. And I thank you, I'm tired to prove obvious things. Goodbye, peace to your home, peace to your soul, goodbye.